In a moment, Gareth Jones on speed. But first, news update. The first motorsport casualty of the credit crunch has just been announced. The Fédération Française du Sport Automobile has cancelled the 2009 French Grand Prix. This statement is from a genuine French person. Vraiment, sir. Sacre bleu. C'est merde, absolument. This is a dreadful situation. Nous avons créé le Grand Prix. And the falling timing, too. Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire maintenant? Just as Renault start winning races oh, again. Oh, Oh, merde. Gareth Jones on speed! Hello, welcome to, uh... Uh, Richard and Zog and Gareth Jones on speed. There you go. That's the new democratic title for the show. Nice. Although the logo isn't going to fit in the window of an iPod terribly well, is it? Uh, how are you guys? All right? Good. Getting by? Looking forward to the next Formula One motor race, perhaps, boys? Oh, what surprises will they spring on us this time? What strange rulings will they use? To... FIA to ban the entire grid except Ferrari. Although, to I be didn't... fair, they were fair in the last race. There was a bit of tit for tat because uh, Massa got his drive through, didn't he? Well, he did, but I don't know. I, I, I didn't quite understand the stewarding decisions in the... I mean, I think they were... <clears throat> I love it when Zog thinks and clears his throat before an answer. This means we're going to get the definitive Zog theory. Go on, Zog. I don't know about that. You, 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 I'm, I'm just going to be slower to come up with the same old bullshit. But the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the Massa Bordet collision... That's what Jensen Button says a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the Massa Bordet collision one was the old one to me because... Uh, mm-hmm. um, and, and actually, this, this sort of illustrates how hard these things can be to decide because when I saw it at first, I couldn't believe that they penalise Bordet, to be honest. But then I did get to see it from a, a different angle. Um, yeah. It was actually the FIA had released some other in-car and other footage through their website a few days after the race, and one of these angles was in that collision, and it was a view from the side of Massa's cockpit looking over the cockpit and past Massa's helmet as he's coming past the pits, and you can see Bordet coming out. And from that angle, it really, really looks as if Massa is comfortably clear of him as Bordet is starting to come out of the pit lane mm. and Bordet then makes up a huge amount of ground and basically kind of accelerates into Massa. Right. And so from that angle, it didn't look at all odd. Having right. said that... I, I am sympathetic to any Formula One driver crashing into any other Formula One driver at the moment, genuinely, because of the increased head protection round the side that now reaches further forward and higher than ever did before. Yeah. If you look at the F1 dot com website they have as Zog said footage of various perspectives of the crashes and you could see how little Philippa Massa not Felipe Massa of course Philippa Massa <laughs> can barely see sideways mm. out of that no wonder they're bumping into each other but I have to say that there was a real huge amount of argy bargy between Lewis and Kimmy and Massa. It was all a bit red mist, I think. I think mm. Lewis panicked. Yeah, I, I think red mist is the phrase for it, absolutely. Both he and Massa just tried a little bit too hard. Yeah. <clears throat> just weren't cool enough in that mm. critical moment. But, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, and we don't admire those drivers and we don't love the sport because they're incredibly calm, cool, calculating people all the time. You know, we, we love it because they're racers <sighs> and because they go at it and they, yeah. will, they will race each other hard. And, uh, yeah. and to some extent, I mean, you know, it was, it was a very, very close call, it seems to me, whether, whether those incidents were, uh, were just, you know, regular racing incidents, move on, nothing to see here, or whether there's something worthy of a penalty. And, you know, let's remember how many times drivers outbreak one another and break way too late into first corners. It's mm. not uncommon. It's called racing, isn't it? Yeah. Let's put Fuji behind us. I, although, no, before no, we, we can't. Do, before, yeah. we, before we leave it completely, I don't know if you've had a look at the ITV catch-up service. Have either of you watched any? No, of, no. Really? Uh, okay, like well, sort of BBC iPlayer, but on ITV. Exactly, yeah. Right. Well, ITV I Player, it. I think it's ITV called, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, well, Is it really? It, no, yeah. no it, 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 it's ITV catch-up. Right, it, okay. They call it their catch-up yeah. service. Good. Um, uh, no, it is not. No, <laughs> it, is, it is horrible. Unfortunately, I had to catch up on the Fuji race on the ITV catch up. Right. I thought, you know, I thought, you know, this is great because I've got fairly used to watching, uh, you know, a certain amount of, you know, BBC, some, yeah, yeah. some of the BBC shows I'll, I'll watch online through the yeah. iPlayer. And I've watched Top Gear that way sometimes and it looks great. Yeah, fast forward through the guest. Exactly. <laughs> um, now, the ITV thing, oh God, where do I start? It's, it's about half the size of the BBC iPlayer. Yeah. For me, it was stuttering really badly. Uh, and that's you saying that. And that's me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
you know, even when you, when you run it full size, because it's the actual pixel size of the, the source is half the size of the iPlayer, mm. you can hardly read the names of the drivers on, oh. you know, where they sort of appear along the bottom of the screen, right. so the, the, that side of it. And on top of this, because they break it into chunks that reflect the ad breaks, mm. yeah. and then put their own little sort of bumpers of one or two ident ads, whatever, in between the race sections, they've done that. But then there is no way to navigate around the program other than jumping between ad breaks. Hmm. So if you want to jump ahead 10 minutes because, let's say, you don't want to watch the grid walk or you're not, you're not interested in that you know, yeah. pre-race interview or whatever, you just can't do it. You can, you can jump ahead to the next section, but you can't jump ahead or jump back just 30 seconds. Oh, so that, that's really annoying. On top of which, every time it's jumping between sections, there's a delay and blank screen. And that blank screen sometimes stays for long enough to make you think that everything's frozen. It was over five minutes on one occasion. What? Uh, That's rubbish. It is. So, so I mean, it's, it's, it, it's absolutely horrible. I can't... What's the opposite of recommend? Damn it. There you are, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I can't damn it enough, and I can't wait for the whole thing to be on the BBC so that if yeah. I have to watch it online again... You can see it on, I can watch it on the iPad. Sure. Have you noticed, though, the best thing, I appreciate this it, will mean nothing to people overseas because I think you can't get iPlayer overseas. Can't I think you that's right. right. Well, there, yeah. Yeah. well, there, there are rights there, I think people do get around. There are ways of yeah, doing yeah. it, but not legally, yeah. Yes. Uh, I've, I've got, got a you, thought about that in a moment, but hang on. Wait, uh, have you noticed on the iPlayer, really nice little touch, I, this must be deliberate, the volume control... Goes up to eleven. Yes, I did notice that, and I <laughs> now, thought exactly the same. Spinal thought, Tap fan yeah, has exactly. made that. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> so you're British. You like Formula One. You need a driver to support, but you're a bit racist. Then you need to root for Jensen Button. He's as white as the driven snow. He has almost no sense of rhythm, and he doesn't like spicy food. He's the perfect British F1 hope for the casual racist who doesn't like, you know, that other chap. For the British racing driver that isn't, you know, he's not one of those, choose Jensen Button, the F1 closet racist choice. Just try not to dwell on the fact that his dad looks like a bit of a gypsy. Steph Petrol with Gareth Jones on speed! I don't know if anyone in the world, apart from me and a few nutty Dutch people, two weeks ago noticed that the A1 GP season has started again. And I was able to watch the race without paying for Sky in this country. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> makes... How did you do that, Gareth? Well, um, you can watch A1 GP online they have a live sort of iPlayer service i suppose Ooh. digital tv mm-hmm. service which i don't think you're supposed to be able to get here in the uk because of the deal a1 gp have with sky but if you go to the a1 gp team usa website it's got a watch live video here because in the states there's no channel taking mm. a1 gp mm. they're ignoring it at the moment but more on that in a second um And so you click on that and you can watch it. And there's a shortcut. It is quite simply www.a1gp.com forward slash live video. I didn't tell you that, right? But if you want to watch it here in the UK without having to pay something like 30 quid a month extra to Mm. Sky because it jumps around from channel on Sky one week, it's on Mm. Sky Sports 2, then Sky Sports 3, just watch it online. And it was a perfectly good service. I was able to sit on my computer and it was great. No embarrassing adverts. Actually, there were some very entertaining Dutch adverts at the end of it for for the Subaru Forest. Oh, You're feeling hungry yet? <laughs> <laughs> Have some cake. <laughs> it was great. Fish kids. But fair play. Um, sorry, this has become a real rant for me about A1 GP. But fair play. The racing at Zandvoort was very entertaining, which may have had something to do with the absolutely was wet, wasn't it? It was, uh... torrential. I cannot ever remember seeing a race held in such awful weather ever. And uh, how any of them kept any of the cars on the circuit, I don't know. Ultimately, Fyros Fauzi won the sprint race for Malaysia, kept it on the track. And then Luc Duval, the gifted French racer, young lad, won the feature race. The new Lebanese driver did well. And Lebanon finally yeah. scored a point after 200 yeah. series of A1GP. They finally scored a point, which makes me very happy. Uh, even if it wasn't either of my two mates driving, at least Lebanon got a point. Uh, but the cars, you know, they've got these Ferraris. Mm. 
we were all very excited. They finally got all the Ferraris, weren't they? They, uh, they, they, they were waiting for yeah. uh, to get the last cars, weren't they? Most of the teams got Ferraris. <laughs> Germany weren't there. Mexico weren't there. Team Great Britain weren't there because none of their cars were ready. And Switzerland wouldn't have been there. This is the one that makes you go, ouch, I think. If for the fact that when Adam Khan, who is now the seat holder for Team Pakistan, tried to get in his Ferrari, realised he doesn't fit. Oh, oh. fuck. Who, and he's bought the franchise. He can't get in the car. They're going to have to redesign the car to get him in. Well, so, in an act of Adam real... Khan is the new National Mansell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he is about six foot... Is he six foot four, I think? Six three? Or certainly oh, six so two, Adam. Justin Wilson, then. Yeah, he is. Mm. Oh, so, um, uh, fair play to, to Adam in, in a... A moment's real sportsmanship, which you just don't get in Formula One. He said to uh, Team Switzerland, Well, you have my car, I can't get in it. So Team Switzerland repainted the car <laughs> yeah. and good they put him. Neil no, Yarny in. That's, that's, that's cool, that's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's no, no, good, good for him for uh, having a bit of showing a bit of. Yeah. Comradely spirit to his fellow yeah. competitors. Well, he could have given it to Team Great Britain. What have the Swiss ever done for us? <laughs> <laughs> or anyone for that matter? The chocolate. <laughs> the chocolate and the clocks and the watches. Yeah, yeah, I'm, right, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not bothered. They, they looked after all that Jewish gold, gold for us as well during the Second World yeah, War. Yeah, they're 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 yeah, they're going to give it back, have they? But the downside of A1 at the moment is they've got these fantastic new Ferraris, which look quite good. They don't look like Ferraris, though. Because they're not red. You know, mm. they just look like A1 GP cars. Mm. The real downside is the engines. Because they've basically got tuned versions of the... What's the modern version of the 328, the Ferrari 328? What's it called? 355? 430. 430? 430. Thank you. That's, that's, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... Is it me or is it the 90s in here? <laughs> <laughs> but they've got one of those engines, but they're kind of detuned to make them last the whole season mm. and so the cars race around the circuit going eh, as opposed to eh. really? yeah they it's don't sound there, great so. and it's taken a lot of the drama away the old ZTEC engines which you hear at the end of every episode of Gareth Jones on Speed you know the bit at the end where it says we're made by Wizbang mm. <laughs> Mm. That's an A1 GP Zetec engine, a good British engine. Zetec or Zytec? Sorry, Zytec. Sorry, Zetec's a Ford. Ford Zytec yeah. engine. I've always made that mistake. The old Zytec engine, but these Ferrari engines have no drama. Anyway, end of rant. That was it about A1 GP. But, but, but since you've raised A1 GP, I mean, th- th- there's been well, there's still speculation about future A1 GP and finances and mm. you know how secure mm. this all is. And I guess that's got to be a little bit less certain the way things are going at the moment, but. What about F1? I mean, what are the implications for Formula One right now? Because we've got all of this, you know, this this whole credit crunch, financial meltdown going on. There's one. What team. does it mean for the most expensive sport in the world? Well, it means probably big trouble for one of the most successful teams in Formula One, Williams, who two of their major sponsors. One are RBS, the Royal Bank of Jackie Stewart. Yeah, yeah. And they are now is it sixty one percent owned by um, Gordon Brown? The Royal Bank of Gordon Brown. Well, they, the government has bought the, one of those. Is it sixty-one percent or forty-nine? I forget. I, don't, I think I don't, it's forty-nine I don't because 49. I think if they go over that, then they become they they nationalised and they haven't nationalised right. as yet. But possibly more significantly, the head of RBS has stepped down along with a couple of other senior uh-huh. executives, mm. I believe. And from what I gather, the boss was instrumental in getting RBS sponsorship yeah. for Williams yeah. because they RBS had basically been advised that sponsoring motorsport and F1 was a silly waste of money. Mm. But and if that wasn't enough so. for poor old Williams, their other major sponsor are the group that own Hamleys. You see Hamleys written on the side of the Williams car. Mm. I forget the name of the group. There. And you see a lot of... Uh, and, and actually, there's a lot of Williams merchandise in Hamleys. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. part of the deal, it? isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're owned by an Icelandic group. And as we all know, Iceland is it's now... Completely- Completely yeah. broke. Yeah. Mm. Bjork. Yes. Bjork's outside. Has saying, been nationalised. Bjork, what a lovely idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be then merged with the lorry maker uh, <laughs> and become Bjork Leyland. <laughs> which, um, <laughs> Bjorkish Leyland. That joke would have worked better if I'd said that, wouldn't it? Um, Beyond just Williams, is it really going to knack a Formula One? They're talking about making a standard engine for next year. Have you heard this? Mm. Not next year, but uh, next couple year of years. After, yeah, I mean, that just sounds like a really bad idea because... If you're going to have a premier motorsport series, you want people to compete in developing technology. And yeah. I, I guess there's a there's a tricky balance to strike here between limiting what the teams can do in order to limit the amount of money they can spend, mm. but then still allowing them to compete in a way that gets us all interested. Yeah. But there is always the argument that it's actually very hard to limit how much money teams 
spend yeah. because if they've got a, a $400 million budget, they're going to spend $400 million on whatever it is they can spend it on. Well, think know? how much complicated can... the Formula One team is as well. It's not just going, right, you can't spend this much money, so just rein in the amount of carbon fibre you order from World of Carbon Fibre in Reading or whatever because, you know, staff costs and... Uh, wind tunnel time if you don't have mm. use of your own wind tunnel, things like that, it all adds up I mean what, they have to go through well, their accounts <coughs> scrupulously and say oh I'm afraid you've gone five quid over here they are yeah, very they, they, complicated they, they, yeah I can't think of a good example right now well I can, uh, the F1 teams are fabulously creative in the ways that they spend money and get around the rules for instance and this is unsubstantiated but it has been alleged that a few years ago when the testing ban first came in Williams were running a car it didn't look like a Formula 1 car because it was a GT bodied car like an LMP prototype Mm. but everything underneath it Mm. was an F1 car Mm. and that's the kind of thinking these guys are competitive it's their job to exploit the rules to find the way to gain the advantage they can't stop themselves Mm. and that usually means spending money they will not be able to stop themselves from spending money or finding ways of spending money even if the FAA says mm. you can only spend 30 quid they will seemingly only spend 30 quid on Formula 1 but somehow spend 300 billion pounds on Williams carbon fibre research development Mm. they'll find a way Mm. hello who is it Hello. Is this Renault F1? Matt B. What do you want? I'm an FIA inspector. I'm here for a random inspection. Please let me in. How can I help you? Yes, I'm from the FIA. There's been a little concern about Renault's sudden increase in straight line pace. Can I have a look inside your engine, please? Why, yes. Uh, here they are. Right, and what's this? Oh, this, uh, it is, um, uh, what we call, uh, uh, it is called a turbo. A what? Uh, yes, it is a turbo, it's a type of fish. Wait a moment, this is a turbocharger, a device for forced induction that increases engine performance. This is extremely serious, you know. Renault F1 are going to be penalised for this action. Renault F1? Uh, no, um, our name is uh, Ferrari. Oh, well, jolly good. As you were, then. Well done on the new colour scheme, by the way. Love the orange and yellow and black combination. Well, good luck with the championship, which you're going to win, of course. One final thing on a Formula One tip. I, I, every time Sebastian Bourdais comes up... I knew you were going to say this! I almost I, mentioned I this! I almost burst. Now, for various complicated copyright reasons, we can't replay commercial music on this podcast without forking out a lot of money. Now, you're getting this show for free, so you're going to have to live with that because you don't have the cash. But I want you to go to YouTube... And look up a song called "On a Ragger Tip" by SL2. <laughs> you might remember it. Do you know uh, it? Yeah. From I don't know what the nineties, mid nineties. Um, <laughs> I'd love to hum you a bit, but again, I can't because we'd get stiff for like thirty grand or something in PRS. So go and look it up. As you're looking it up, have Sebastian Bourdais' name in mind. That's all I'm saying. If you agree with me, email in. Okay. If we're talking about lookalikes, or you know. Sound this, this, this kind of sound alike. Just things that don't in sound like. I'm do. trying so hard this not to sing that phrase now. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but, uh, okay. <laughs> this is. We, we, we are in the last few weeks when we can make a valid observation about the remarkable similarity between David Coulthard and certain cartoon driving hero, you might say. I Think know. Wacky races. I know exactly Think, who hmm. you mean. He is and always has been Peter Perfect. He, uh, yes, we are about to lose Peter Perfect. So, so who's Penelope Pitstall? Yano Trilly. 
<laughs> he does run like a girl. It, 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 it he does. Yeah, it Did you ever see that? When was yeah. he? He was in a Mugen yeah. Honda. It caught fire. Yeah. He jumped out of the car and he ran away. Oh, like a girl! Actually, Phil did who? that once as well. Runs like a girl. F1 drivers who run like girls. There's a whole separate series. <laughs> Robert Kubica would be. I don't know who he is, but he's somebody in the creepy coop. Um, <laughs> yeah, for damn. Uh, I don't know. Squadro Toro Rosso, possibly the Ant Hill mob. Okay, uh, you guys, make with a Vettel. Uh, <laughs> Boulder Brothers, who'd be the Boulder the Brothers? The Boulder, Rock and Gravel. We, we've, oh, lost the, we've lost the Schumacher, so it's not them anymore. And Button and uh, Barrichello, the Boulder Brothers. Oh, okay. boom, 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 bashing each other over the head. Uh, yeah, we lost the Red Baron, Schumacher, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. Uh, who else are we? Oh, Pat Pending. Oh, we who, know who that is. It's got to be Adrian Newey. Adrian Newey! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> any other suggestions? Let us know. Mail him then. You've been listening to Gareth Jones on Speed with Richard Porter, Zog, and me, Gareth Jones. Uh, we wish uh, Lewis and all the other drivers um, a safe time at uh, the Chinese Grand Prix uh, this weekend. Uh, who's going to win it, guys, before we go? Lewis. Hamilton. <laughs> all right, all right. That's the race, but who's going to win the championship and will it be over at the end of this race? What do you think? I don't think it'll be over at the end of this race. I agree uh, with Zog. I think... And I hope it's going to be Lewis. Simple as that. Yeah. I agree with Zog again. However, I'm sorely tempted to go and stick uh, a few quid on Mr. Robert Kubica, the stalking horse. It would be a very good bet, actually. Yeah. It's great because they're all in there, you know, with the exception of Kimmy, who suddenly started driving really well just in time for the end of the season. <laughs> Timing. So yeah, yeah. Be comedy. <laughs> Him and Alonso. But yeah, yeah. It, it, I tell you, it, my theory is that it won't be over at the Chinese race. Because Bernie won't let it. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get more info on this show at GarethJones.tv. Write to the show on speed at GarethJones.tv or subscribe free at the iTunes store. Gareth Jones on Speed is made by Whizbang. Whizbang.